I'm delighted to introduce this video produced in partnership with the Royal Institute of Architects of Ireland and the Department of Culture, Heritage and the Gaeltacht on our approaches to our built and historic environment. Well, this video and the associated publication is designed to provide best practice advice for professionals, owners and businesses on how to approach our historic built infrastructure. So the video is an accompaniment to the um, online book and it shows examples of where architects have worked with people to bring a whole range of, of projects back to being fabulous homes. We have individual houses that are protected structures, we've got homes in the countryside which were farm buildings that are now stunning places to live. But we also have projects from the smaller scale where you're looking at living over the shop and you have the potential to live in a town, village or city to a larger scale where a whole quarter has been revitalised to provide a fantastic new urban village within an existing city area. And we really hope that it will inspire people and encourage people to take on these kinds of projects. So we first came across this building about eight years ago. Um, it had been on the market for a couple of years. Um, nobody wanted it, it was, it was derelict and it wasn't selling. The upper floors were still in their Georgian format and were uncombined. And we felt we could combine those to make a great house and then try and use the roof of the 1960s extension to create a big roof garden. Um, I guess when you're working with a historic building, you're sort of all the time uncovering and having to reimagine what you wanted to do or how you were working with it. You're all the time thinking about how can you repair the building and trying to make sure that the, the layers you're adding in don't fundamentally damage what was there before and allow the building to last hopefully for another maybe 200 years or into the future. So I think when you're taking on a project like this um, or any project that has some significant historical element to it, it's very important that you work with a, a good conservation architect. Working on this project it was certainly key. So we love this house. Um, we've been here now for, for, for five years and it's, it's made, made a great home. Um, we wondered about living right in the city as, as we do. We live in a very busy street in the city centre and we wondered how we would feel about living here. It was a big change from where we, where we lived before, but we absolutely adore it. Um, the house itself is delightful, um, living at, on the upper floor, so our, our reception rooms and roof garden are at the first floor, and then we have bedrooms at second floor level, so you feel like you're living in the light all of the time, um, which is, is really super. Um, reusing an existing building is also a very energy efficient thing to do or to get more value out of an existing building. Existing buildings contain a lot of embodied energy and um, huge amount of energy has gone into constructing existing buildings. So trying to take them and make them more energy efficient and then populating our city centres is, is really important um, and also gives a very good quality of life. The original context of this farmyard is it, it belongs to Tenote House, which is a house just up on the hill, and um, it, it must have been a beautiful place for what, 1860. Everything, everything in, in the farmyard had a purpose. It was a really busy place, and the Stewart's house is just across the way, and that's part of the whole place. This building here had no roof. Some of the wall had uh, been demolished by my father. Uh, to make it easier to feed cattle. The shed itself ha was actually a slatted unit, which is uh, basically where a well is dug out in the middle of the building, uh, which my brothers dug out by hand when they were about 15 and 16 years of age. And uh, it's then slatted over with concrete slats. It's lovely to see it repurposed now and uh, uh, come alive again. We've built this timber structure within the original structure. It supports the two bedrooms overhead and the floor has been made with Wicklow sand, Wicklow granite, and actually cast in position. And the staircase that's behind me, you can see that that's cast concrete and polished. So there's an interesting connection between the material that made the original walls and the material and sand, which now makes the new and quite modern looking floor. The stone came from Ballynock and the McAvoy brothers cut the stone, dressed the stone, supply the stone. So probably the stone in Ballynock was where the stone came from here originally. So there's that interesting connection across the centuries. But we had two fantastic Polish builders, uh, Radek and Machu. Nothing was ever a problem. And they understood the drawings and they understood what Michael wanted to do. And that, I think, was 
very important because I was confident with them doing what they had to do. The roof lights were specialised, all the timber, the joinery, um, every little piece of work they did and they really enjoyed it and I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the project. Um, I don't think we had any rows and I suppose the difference of working with an architect and builders who get each other. The project here is a rehabilitation of, a, of an existing building, 19, late 19th century building, uh, from bedsits into uh, five apartments. It was in reasonable condition. I mean, what was really interesting uh, of the building was that most of the original architectural features retained, so the cornices, the uh, centrepieces, the architraves, joinery, doors, and the main stairs was intact. We looked at traditional approaches of panelling, uh, boat design, spaces which are carefully planned, very high quality. So what we did is we accommodated all of the uh, bathrooms and kitchens within panelling along the external perimeters of the wall within, a, a, let's say, accommodation which only went up to a certain height, so typically about uh, slightly less than eight feet. And then above that then, the, uh, the original proportions of the rooms are, are retained, so you can see the cornices and so on. And one of the features which I think has worked out very well is, is that we put the shared laundry facilities and services in the return at the rear, and it allowed us to provide a little bit more accommodation to the apartments themselves. And we had an excellent client. I mean, no project is successful without a very good client, um, and uh, he had very uh, high ambitions for the project. And I think the whole team uh, involved, you know, um, collaborated together very well and, um, and, and that it's visible in the outcome here. It just took more, a few weeks more than six months as I remember and uh, the building was in a really very bad condition so uh, we were uh, really skeptic if the, it would be possible to have it done in, in such a short term but uh, finally so uh, the builder and the architects worked perfectly together and we brought some ideas from Germany and so everything really went very well. It's a very good feeling, especially when you get up into this floor we are right now, and um, in that extension in the return with the views over the Wigner Mountains and uh, down into the city. And that gives you, on six square meters, this gives you the feeling of a little castle. So it's really perfect. It's an old uh, late Georgian property dating from around the, the mid 1840s before we could do anything in terms of the aesthetics of it. We had to structurally um, improve the building. We also underpinned um, and lowered the, the basement floor because it was only six foot high. The challenge for us was to bring an old building like this up to current building regulation standards, particularly with regard to fire, where um, we have to create a, a good separation between the flats and between the commercial unit um, on the, the ground floor as well. We've managed to retain an awful lot of the historic fabric of the building. The original floors were kept, the ceilings were kept, um, and lime render was used then throughout um, to maintain the, the brickwork, the old brickwork. With close collaboration with, with, with Dublin City Conservation Department, we were able to achieve something which is uh, now a very workable um, and viable uh, unit on the ground floor. This part of Pier Street was, um, although it's very, very close to the, the centre of Dublin, was right, right opposite Trinity College almost, um, it was rather run down um, and I think that rehabilitating this building in particular has made a difference just to, to this stretch, certainly in Pier Street but also in the wider area and I think the, the importance there really is that re-inhabiting re um, buildings like this which can often be left um, in a pretty bad state and people are often uh, scared to, to do any work to them, but I think the reward is significant because there's great, great, great character in these buildings and um, if you can just unlock that. Two things really impressed me when I walked the site first. Firstly was the, was the range and variety of buildings that we had on site here. We had ten different protected structures uh, and each of the buildings were in their own state of disrepair. Uh, we had buildings that were stables that were used to house 
soldiers, artillery, there were stores, and there was an officer's mess. So there was a complete range of buildings that you would expect to find in a, in, a, in, a, in a barracks building in an urban setting. The second thing that really impressed me was not just the buildings, but the spaces between the buildings and the potential to create new spaces. We had all the ingredients here to create a new urban village. We had a main square, we had courtyards, we had streets alleyways, gardens. So what we had initially was a, a, an incomplete jigsaw puzzle and the challenge here was to try and create and design those new pieces to complete the puzzle. The brief from our client Kennedy Wilson was to provide units for single people, groups of people and families with kids. And that's norm that can be difficult enough when you're dealing with new buildings but in old buildings it was a real challenge. What we did was we kind of allowed the buildings themselves to tell us where the solutions were by looking at where the staircases were, where the windows were, where the load-bearing walls were. So they, uh, they sort of guided us to how we would subdivide the buildings. We weren't shoehorning in a, a typical plan. We were actually allowing the buildings themselves to tell us how to subdivide them. Um, the, the, other, the other challenge that we had, I suppose, really was you run into problems sometimes when you ask an old building to perform like a new building. These buildings were built at a time where people's expectations of how they were going to perform thermally were much different to today. So it is important to get really good expert advice and those sort of things. You can do more damage insulating an old building incorrectly than not insulating it at all. Any interventions we made on the old buildings were expressed as modern interventions, whether it was for the, the, the buildings themselves within an urban design context or whether it was a window where we had to make a, an existing window bigger. We, we kept the old piece of the window and we restored that, but we expressed a new piece of the window as a new element. So that was a very simple philosophy that we were rigorous with right through the whole project, whether it was a small detail or whether it was a, a large building within a site context. We uncovered this colonnade which was south facing, which was fantastic. And it immediately said, okay, we have to have the living rooms down here. We have to have spaces looking out onto private private terraces. So it was, it was really, it's all about understanding your building and when you understand your building it will give you hints and it will give you guides of how to, how to use them properly. I think what we've achieved here really illustrates what can be done when you integrate existing buildings into new development and it is possible to reuse our architectural heritage to create sustainable communities uh, for future generations. So the OAI is delighted to have had the opportunity to work with the department to develop this guide looking at the opportunities that are available to people to bring an older property back to life as a new home or on how to upgrade their existing older property into the home of their dreams. These offer really exciting opportunities and there's great potential in older buildings but there's also challenges and we wanted to ensure that people get the right advice when they're embarking on these projects. It's really important that they work with qualified professionals who understand the complexity of what they're trying to do, who can take them through all of the regulatory steps that they have to do, can take them through the building contract, but can also look at the building and look at what all of the possibilities are. And that is what a qualified architect can do.